Welcome to the Cap Unknown video series. Thanks for awesome. joining me today. Um, awesome. Could you Thanks tell me? No, th no problem. Thanks. Um, could you tell myself and the audience a little, a little bit about yourself? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. So my name is Corey Washington. I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I am the only child. However, I promise I don't have the only child syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I very, very close to my family. My cousins were like my brothers and sisters. My mom and dad were amazing. Um, I pretty much moved to Indianapolis after I got done. I went out after I got done with grad school. And really, after I after I turned thirty, um, I decided to move to Indianapolis, move to Indianapolis, Indiana, to pursue broader opportunities within my field of, of, of IT. I was in the IT industry for a long time, came from pharmaceuticals, went over to IT, mainly in the marketing technology space. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought moving, Indianapolis was a, is an amazing city to raise a family, a great city to grow up, but I really wanted more in terms of expanding my career. And so I moved yeah. to Austin, Texas. I was there for about two years and decided to be closer to home, but not quite home. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one, uh, the city that came to mind for me, I mean, I was looking at multiple different cities to move to. Um, there was a few different job offers that I had on the table. And um, one of them was moving to San Diego. One other was moving to San Francisco, which in hindsight, um, one would be wondering like, why did I not do that? Because you're an <laughs> IT professional, you want to work for big tech. Yeah. Um, and for me, I wanted a city that was growing in the technology industry, mm -hmm. in techno growing your technology space, um, but also much more diverse. Um, I grew up in cities that were, Indianapolis was diverse, but just not what I experienced here in Atlanta, seeing multiple different sides of our culture, mm -hmm. multiple different appreciations of, of, of black and brown people is amazing. Yeah. And so I decided to take the leap and move to Atlanta and I have not looked back. Um, this is the place where I got my entrepreneur's kind of spirit, the entrepreneur mm -hmm. kick, um, and started my own, two of companies of my own um, li living here. It's just been a pleasure and a blessing and an honor to, to be able to be around so many Black entrepreneurs, Black creators, and it really helped me look within myself to see, like, what is it that I love to do? that I can put out there more as my, and have my own company, but mm -hmm. use my companies for a good cause. Make sure that we are very purpose-driven brands. Um, and honestly, that's how I've kind of got my start here. So the two companies I own, I own Popa, which is what I'm wearing right now. It means perseverance over privilege and based in Atlanta. Um, it's kind of, a, it pays homage to my own personal story of what I've gone, what I have experienced as a, black person in the IT space, in the creative space, um, not really having much of a voice and kind of finding my voice through that of perseverance, not of privilege. Um, and then there is my digital business called Rashari. Rashari is actually my mom's name and my dad's name put together, <laughs> Richard and Sherry put together because they're the ones that kind of um, were my were my um, my role models, Inspiration. and kind of inspirations to my creativity, um, and I kind of use that business to take what I've learned at working at Salesforce and working at some top tier agencies, and bring those on to help um, smaller businesses in our community be just as dynamic in their marketing and in their, in their customer engagement. Um, and as you're talking about um, trying to find a place with diversity and things that represent you as a person how do you use your businesses to uphold that oh man community both businesses are very empathy driven brands very purpose -dri purpose driven brands so for popa for example because i mean the, the the name alone is very powerful and what it means especially how much it resonated with the last last dark four years of <laughs> that we've got that we've gone through for for black and brown people but um mm -hmm. popa i take the the materials that i have or the, the clothing i have and find ways to give back um to people who are kind of making a, a choice in their life to change their trajectory um 
take themselves out of out of a horrible situation and, and find creativity within themselves to build a career. And we look for ways to give our clothes to people, to organizations that that are helping people do that because we resonate to that meaning. Um, because last year was so hard for us because of COVID, well, last Last year was definitely beyond hard for us because of COVID. So our launch plans didn't work, it couldn't go according to the plan. A lot of things have, we still have trying to find ways to give back that way, as well as is look for organizations we can fiscally give back to um, in upcoming collections, via upcoming collections. So 2021 is gonna be a big year for us. Um, we're gonna do be able to do a lot of things we didn't got didn't get to do last year. <laughs> yeah. But the biggest piece of that business plan is fill fill it through fill out for giving. Now for Rashari, um, we've made a decision to give our service. We have a we have a package called Rashari Go. So it's a smaller tier package. We're um, um, doing a lot of quick base work to get a, a young or not, not young, um, most of our most of our entrepreneurs that we've working with been young, but um, didn't have to be, but new entrepreneurs off from the ground. The website, basic marketing automation principles, onboarding campaigns, things like that. We have given that package away to specific people um, quarterly just to ensure that, hey, what are we doing to give back something? we're getting things in we're growing Rashari is definitely growing what can we do to give back to people in need especially people who have who've been affected by COVID they yeah. are in situations one of the people that we work with they lost their job due to COVID they were damn near on food stamps and so we found a way to say hey what can we do to offer what our, our, our smallest package that, that something just they just need real quick because there's there's costs that go along with um having a website, having these different mm -hmm. tools. So what can we do to provide our design services and our strategy services free for people like that? And we loved it so much. I mean, honestly, we loved it. It filled our hearts so much to where it's like, we're gonna do that truly every quarter, but we're gonna put, we're gonna do more with it. <laughs> we're literally gonna do more with it because it was so much fun for us. Honestly, it was me and myself, my, say us, myself and my designer, it was just such a, it, it was an, it was an honor to give back like that and see how it really affected somebody. Yeah, see how it putting, really did help. Yeah, putting COVID aside, like in terms of giving back, but also helping up and coming entrepreneurs, what do you run into when it comes to them needing help? Knowledge. Um, so sometimes you don't know what to ask. They don't yeah. know who to ask. Honestly, as an entrepreneur, I find myself in that position myself. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. didn't have the resources that many other people have had. And so just basic knowledge of who to ask, what to ask, when to ask, um, what do specific things mean? Like when you're dealing with, for example, our, it's easy, the easiest mark, area for us to go into is, is e-commerce and, and fashion mm -hmm. and B2B. Yeah. Because B2B marketing is was what I mainly do on my full-time job. Mm -hmm. which both, all these are kind of full-time jobs, so it's nothing. <laughs> B2B markets I do for my nine to five, but fashion is what I do um, on my other, my, my personal business. So those two things that we are, we're really good at. Um, and we have, there's times we'll have a designer come to us to say, hey, I have an idea, but they're not thinking about who is the core audience they're talking to, what resonates to them, what's, what's your brand story. Um, how can you how can you get that story out there? Because in the day, it's not about the clothes. Anybody can start a fashion line. Anybody yeah. can can do what I did, put Popa on a shirt. But really, what is your story? What is your background? What does it mean? Like we want to, people want to feel your story. They want to resonate with you. They want to say, ah, you know what? I get that. I've been through that. I I feel you. And so, getting them to really speak their truth is something that they don't really sometimes they're getting better at this but don't really have the sense of, of, of knowing how to do effectively at first mm -hmm. and also That's technology great. behind it yeah when talking about technology and that was like you've worked in that field for so many years what did you come against as a man of color in that field 
if any. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> the IT industry is getting slightly better. Not yeah. not not fast enough, but was is majority. It's majority Caucasian um, and Asian, and so there's a there's a few different challenges we've had um, that 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 African Americans have in IT. One, the, the, the underrepresentation in in, mm -hmm. in, in, our, in our in our in that field, um, and also we don't our voices aren't as heard within IT as it could be. Um, whenever you're looking at people being brought to the table, mm -hmm. you see you don't see many African Americans, Americans brought to the table to make, um, to make decisions in terms of brand, in terms of design, in terms of, you know, things like that, that could be very helpful. You see all these, so many different brands have gotten in trouble yeah. for making the wrong design choices because they didn't understand how it would affect other cultures mm -hmm. and not giving us a space at the table to make sure that the design that is being chosen the communication that's being chosen is is resonating to everyone. Not and as just, you say that, yeah. it relates to like Aunt Jamama, Uncle Ben, yeah, um, the football teams with yeah. the Native American symbol on it. Yeah, it re resonates to all of that. To all cultures, and it's and it's and it, it's it's so important to make sure that even your teams are as diverse as possible. Diverse thinking brings upon so much so much transformation so much innovation. Um, as a leader myself, I try to make sure that I, first of all, I love having people in the room that are smarter than me. Yeah. Um, and people in the room that come from multiple backgrounds, different backgrounds than even myself, because I love hearing the different perspectives. Hearing the different perspectives across all facets makes me a better leader, but makes our brand better. It makes our our technology, our, 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 our clothing, our, our design better. De diversity is crucial to success of all companies, especially when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. So could you take us on a little trip from how you got to Indian Indianapolis, right? Yep. All the way to Atlanta. Like <laughs> what, what truly motivated you to make that move? Cause it's a lot of people, a lot of young people may watch this and are wanting to get out of Clarkson, get out of DeKalb County, get out of Atlanta, because this yeah. is all they know. How could you give them some inspiration or advice on how to do that? It took a lot of, when you're living in a place that you're comfortable, I was comfortable in Indianapolis. My whole family at the time was there, mm -hmm. minus a, a couple that, well, one that moved to Atlanta. Um, <laughs> It, I was comfortable there and it's so hard to leave your comfort zone, especially when you're close to you, you're as close to the family as, as, as I have. Yeah. Um, it, th there are some sleepless nights even thinking about it, but you, if, if there is a passion that you have, if there's a route, a pace you want to go, if there's some place you want to go in your career, that you know that it's going to take radical change, you have to find an inner strength because that's just the first step. Um, being able to do something for yourself that way, even though it's uncomfortable, making uncomfortable decisions is a critical part of your career, your professional, your personal journey. And for me, it was, I knew that as much as uncomfortable as it was to leave my family, in order for me to progress my career, hell, even become a better person myself. I had to leave that comfort zone. I lived in Indianapolis for 30 years. Wow. <laughs> it was time, I'm 36 now. It was time for me to spread my wings and leave, to really become the professional, the person, the partner, the, everything I wanted to be. Um, moving to Austin for me was a great experience because it was a beautiful city full of creative people and, and, and the technology industry was thriving there. I met a ton of amazing friends there, a ton of amazing people there that really helped me to start seeing that creative side I had. Mm -hmm. But honestly, at that time, Austin did not have the diversity that I needed. Austin at the time was about 5% African American. Wow. And I wanted to see, while I was learning amazing things, I wanted to see 
more people that look like me doing the the next level stuff that I wanted to do. So I had to take that second leap, which was a little bit easier um, to move to Atlanta. And Atlanta is the play, is the Mecca of black power. It's the Mecca of black entrepreneurship and black yeah. excellence. And so I really needed to be here. Um, and that was at that time after moving away for the first time, <laughs> it was easy for me to be like, okay, this is now, this is feeling more natural. This it's is easier. even easier. Yeah. yeah. So, so honestly, um, the short answer to that is you have to, and it, it, it is, is what Popa completely just, just, in, it just represents. You have to want it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You, that, that, that act of perseverance. Um, overcoming adversity to achieve self-made success is our mantra. It's on our shirts. Um, you have to really just just get that inner strength to, to move forward and do what, what you know you have to do in order to do what's right for, for what your career and your, your passion is. Yeah, you have to put aside the naysayers and the people saying, are you oh, sure? Oh yeah, people will say it. They will All say that, it. They especially will say when it. you're the first of doing something yep. like that. Yep, I'm the yeah. first in my family to even have a master's degree. There's there's a few of us that have undergraduates, wow. but um, I mean, all of our, our whole entire family is doing amazing. They're incredibly hard workers. Um, but it, I, I, I chose to take the path I wanted specifically for myself and based on where I wanted to go for my career. In terms of talking about the first, because many of the people in Clarkson that are where I work, it's uh, refugee immigrant based, but then we do have um, other minorities like African Americans, a few Latinos, and most of the children coming up that I work with are first time uh, high school attendees, first time going to college. Um, most of the, some of the parents do have like a background of going to college in their country where they've come from, but most of the students are first timers. So being able to take that advice from you, I'm sure will be a great inspiration to them because like we try to do our best in focusing them and providing them in enough opportunities, whether that be with education, um, film, TV, all that robotics, coding, all that. Awesome. So that's great to hear. You in know, terms of being, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Say, it's one of those things of, of, of just, I never compete against myself, especially when it comes to kids. The kids are very, especially in this in this new generation, um, they're very competitive. Mm -hmm. Heck, you have to be competitive as yeah. as as a person, as a business owner, as a leader, as a as a any any no, no matter what you're doing, um, you have to be competitive. But yeah, especially as a person of color, too. Exactly. We have we have the double <laughs> things we yeah. have to go up against, and so. But I like to compete against myself. I like to tell to, to look at myself and say, okay, what next? What could I do next? What can I do better? I have a hard time, and even this is sometimes it's difficult, even in, in business, I have a hard time looking at what other people are doing. I much rather say, what can we do to be better? How do we beat this up even more? How do we make this data look? How, how, how do we take this, this data and insights we're getting from our engagement and 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 really dig into it to see where we are, where we're failing, where we're doing good, where, where can we add more more um, resources to. But um, even as a, as a kid, you have to be able to not focus what other people are doing, but what can you do to really get yourself up to where you want to be, what your, what your dreams and your passions are. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear from you. For one thing, could you share if they don't take anything from this interview. Could you share one thing that you feel it would boost someone's um, career path, personal path, whatever that may be? Oh yeah, there's two things. There's a there's a saying by Martin Luther King Jr. that I love so much. You don't have to. You, you don't have to see it. You don't have to get. To, well, now I'm forgetting it already. Now I'm saying <laughs> it. It's put me on the spot. It's the one where you don't have to see where you're going just take the first you have to know where you're going just take just just take the first step mm -hmm. i forget the actual way to say that um now of course i'm, I'm like thinking about <laughs> it um you have to know where you're going just just take the first step mm -hmm. um but also if 
Never expect for someone to give you a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. If you got to build your own table and your own build seat, it. do it. Um, never let your manager or your, your whoever your leaders are control where you are going in your career. Mm -hmm. You let them know this is what you want to do. This is where you want to go. Here is my plan of getting here. Do you agree? What do you think I need to do to change it around to make sure that it is getting me to where I want to go? Even if you're not working with a manager or a leader of some sort, and you're just kind of putting it up for yourself, write down where you want to go and kind of put down your own checklist of what, of what you think is going to be needed to get there. Feel free to ask people. Like, don't be afraid to ask. Please ask. Reach out on LinkedIn, reach out on, on Instagram on specific hashtags that more resonate to what you're trying to do and ask people, hey, how did you do? How did you do it? <laughs> like, what was the struggles you had to get there? But but build those build those pathways of, of, of your journey yourself, if need be. Um, and honestly, that's what helped me by just being curious. Yeah. Curiosity is, is, is so creative. It really it really fosters that creativity. So definitely build it. What do you say that? It's like because I am working on some things on my own, which this will be an extension of possibly. Mm -hmm. But I've been stuck a little bit with you saying it. It's like, okay, God, I hear you. All right. Just stop yelling yeah. at me. I get yeah. it. I need to write it down. Yeah. Make it plain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Write the vision, make it plain, um, and speak it into existence. I mean, this road to entrepreneurship, man. <laughs> uh, people only see sometimes the tip of the iceberg. They see the success. They probably see a little bit of struggles, but they see that you're doing something yeah. and, you're, and, and you're optimizing and you're changing it and, and things are working. Man, they do not see the bottom of that iceberg. At all. The tears, the, the, just the, the sleepless nights, the being tired, being just just plain exhausted, thinking that, you know what, there's been times with Popa, even 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 Rashar, I just said, I almost said, you know what, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, you gotta, that's just part of entrepreneurship. That's just part of the game. And and honestly, it's just building you to be a better leader and a better creator as you're going throughout this journey. Thank you so much for joining me, Corey. That, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. It's gonna be so great to uh, edit and then post. Oh, yeah. and then watch everybody watch um but could you share where people can find you on all your businesses yeah um rashari is um www.rashari.com um feel free to reach out to us on there or the rashari team at gmail.com um we are brand rashari is brand new it's only been around for less than a year and so we're starting to beef up even our own operations to, to where things are going to be changing in exciting ways so stay tuned but for Popa, um, our IG is where Popa at where Popa W E A R P O P A. Um, but also, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, Corey Allen Washington. Um, but yeah, those are the places you can reach out to me. All right, thank you so much again, Corey, for joining me. Awesome, and thank have you a so great much for day. having me. You too. All right, have a good one. You too. Bye -bye. All right.